Hello and welcome to this episode of RPG Gamer Top 5s. And this time, as part of a series on the top RPGs on each system, we're going to be doing the top 5 RPGs on the Sinclair ZX81. The ZX81 is a computer released in 1981, and its main design concept was cheapness. It shipped with a massive 1 kilobyte of memory and was powered by a super fast 3.25 MHz Zilog Z80 processor. It could display both colours, both black and white, had no graphics or sound processors at all, and a screen resolution of 64 pixels by 48 pixels. With the screen occupying about three quarters of its one kilobyte memory, most owners added a 16 kilobyte RAM expansion, called a RAM pack, into the back of the machine, which would often move during play, causing a crash or reset, which we called RAM pack wobble. You connected the machine to the aerial socket of your normal television set for its display, and for loading software you connected it to a normal cassette recorder and used the standard audio cassettes of the time. And it was my first computer, which I still possess, proudly displayed on my wall. So what kind of games were available on this system? Well for all of its limitations there were a surprisingly varied amount, from flight simulators to shoot 'em ups to maze games, but with its limitations very few could actually be described as role playing games. So we're going to stretch the term here into games in which you played a role, or which were inspired by the Dungeons and Dragons phenomenon which was growing at the same time as this computer was released. So with that in mind, on with our list. And at number 5, Adventure A Planet of Death by Arctic Computing in 1981. Dungeons and Dragons inspired many games, but the first of these, and perhaps the gateway drug into RPGs from computers, were the text adventures. The first of these in 1976 was Colossal Cave. Finding yourself in a fantasy setting, you had to navigate the world through a simple text entry system, where what you could see, hear and smell would be described to you, and you would enter symbol, verb and noun instructions, such as take sword, open door, go north or hit hawk, to interact with the world and solve its puzzles and challenges. Given the basic capabilities of the ZX81, this was a type of game which the computer was well suited to and the most memorable text adventure for the system was Planet of Death. You took the place of a space traveller stranded on an alien world and you must retrieve your spacecraft and escape. And at number 4, the Trader Trilogy by Pixel Productions in 1983. Trader was a multi-load game which although was easy to beat had a lot of replay value. You played a starship captain taking your transport ship through the Meridian system, visiting the various planets and encountering the aliens there. There are dialogue sections where you must negotiate a deal. There are more gamey sections where you must navigate mazes to avoid criminals trying to steal your cargo. Or you must land your ship safely. The replay comes from the cargo you load your ship up with at the start. Will you load up on illegal drugs and sell to the criminal underworld at high risk? Or will you take a more mundane cargo which will make less profit? Depending on the skill of the player and what kind of person they want to be, they can make it rich or totally lose everything. At number 3, Mazogs by Bugbyte Software in 1982. A classic maze game, Mazogs takes elements of Dungeons and Dragons and puts them into an action game. You're an adventurer going into a maze to get the treasure. Inside the maze are the evil Mazogs which patrol it. You can find swords to help you fight the Mazogs. You can find other adventurers who became lost and are now just blinking eyes embedded in the walls who will offer you directions to the treasure and the way back out. Once you're carrying the treasure, you can't carry a sword as well, so you have to backtrack your footprints, but did you take too many side turns on your way in, and your footprints are everywhere? If so, this can make you stumble into more Mazogs when you aren't equipped to fight them. At number 2, 3D Monster Maze by JK Gray Software in 1982. Perhaps the most famous game on the system, 3D Monster Maze is here not because it has many RPG elements, but simply because it deserves to be mentioned whenever people discuss the zx one You're a visitor to a circus, and the ringleader offers you a chance to see a Tyrannosaurus Rex, perfectly preserved in silicon since the dinosaur age. You are then thrust into a 3D maze and have to find your way to the exit. Never before have simple text cues such as Rex lies in wait, he sees you, and run, he is behind you, provided such adrenaline rushes. These text cues at the bottom of the screen serve much the same purpose as markers on your compass do in modern games, allowing you to know things which aren't directly in front of you on the screen. Sprinting away in panic, trying to avoid the Tyrannosaur while not stumbling into a dead end made this an absolute essential for the system, and still a great, if extremely basic, game to play today. 
And number one, The Black Crystal by Carnell in 1982. And our number one is the nearest to a proper RPG which ever came out for the ZX81. The Black Crystal, not to be confused with Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal, describes itself as an epic role-playing adventure of fantasy in six parts. Navigating maps and mazes while battling monsters of various types sounds like any modern RPG, and the fact that you must maintain your physical health, spiritual health and purity just shows that all the elements of modern games are really here. The Black Crystal has the player take the part of an adventurer, seeking to free the valley from the influence of the Black Crystal itself. Only by questing between multiple areas over six different loads can the player gather the rings of creation to destroy it. Classic RPG fare, really, and with text adventure sections with character interaction, it's really a game you can lose yourself in for days. So, what did you think? Any ones we missed? Any favourites you'd like to suggest? Let us know, either in the comments below or by getting in touch with us. So, as always, many thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like what we're doing. But most of all, look after yourselves, and we'll see you soon. Bye.